has things changed since the last time I uploaded or what? Now, unfortunately, due to the things happening in the real world, my wardrobe might change, the background might change, my, hell, my audio might change, even the camera angle might change, due to my work life and personal life being just a little too hectic as I'm trying to change my setup entirely, so I wasn't able to get it optimized by the time I was putting this video together. Sorry for that, but I wanted to warn you guys ahead of time. Let's get into what this video is about. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about two new short collar options, one coming from the Young Fanta and the other coming from the Crown series. The Young Fanta finally has cut its big brother's uh, collar in half and finally gave us a Young experience in a compact form factor. And of course, with the short collar Young, it definitely stays with the traditional Korean lever, being more authentic than the other Japanese compatible Fanta style levers. The next one's gonna be the 309 New Help Me, the stupidest name in the world. It's obviously gonna be the more compact version of the full collar 309 Help Me. Now this isn't going along the line of the 309 MJ, as the modifications was actually tailored by the player Help Me. With that all the way, Dark Gundam decided to land on Earth and spread all his dark cells across the Earth and nerf everybody's good feels, cancel events, and just make the entire world suck for a bit. But eventually, God Gundam is going to come and Sekihai can kill get his ass out of here eventually, but we're gonna have to wait for that time to come. I hope my videos will give you some positive vibes, make you guys feel good, maybe burn some time throughout the day, as I know most of us are staying home during this time. In other words, I hope you guys are staying safe and being safe. Well, Young on, fans have finally on. cut down his full collar design in half, joining the thank god I don't have to cut my fucking fight stick club. When comparing them side by side from the full collar and the short collar, the inside diameter would have you assume the throw is much shorter on that of the chopped version. However, the throw of the short collar is extremely close to that of the full collar distance, so you do get a full collar experience within this compact package. One thing that I did notice while playing on the short collar, there is a bit more tension within the body, so it does seem like the lower collar version is going to be more tension than that of the full collar version, similar to what I experienced with the V5 to the 309 MJ. The one thing I forgot to mention in my original roundup was the benefit of the flippable actuator as the versatility of the Young is always in your grasp. The 15 and millimeter side of the actuator will allow for a balanced area of neutral with corners that aren't too big or too small. But if some players find the area of neutral too small, they can put that bang down, flip it and reverse it to the 14 and millimeter side for the exact opposite experience with deeper corners and a bigger area of neutral. They also trim down the fat on the sides, at least for the short collar, so that way you don't have to turn the mounting plate in order to mount in a fight stick because on the full collars, it was a little too wide and it'll cover up the Japanese mounting holes. And also carrying over from the full collar version is the Gersung A2s. And oh my God, for the love of God, stop using these screws that put strip and stripped club. The 45A grommet, that's still clone by the way, and the matte finished Young bat top, which is pretty unmistakable for the fancy style levers. Uh, it is heavier than my Fujin and my base model Myung Shen, so you can take that for what you will. So if you didn't notice, the Young pretty much sticks to what it knows and doesn't really take any chances deviating from the full collar's roots. But to me, this isn't really a bad thing as it gives you a traditional experience in a compact form factor compared to having to cut that hole as I mentioned earlier. Now with that said, let's go take a look at the new 309 Help Me. Remember the joke I made about, oh, here's another 309 MJ? Well, uh, th th this is that joke. This is yet another Crown MJ variant joining the never ending fucking pile of Crown MJ variants. This is obviously the short version of the full collar Help Me with some changes. It apparently has a new body design, but I can't really tell personally, nor do I have a 309 MJ on hand anymore. So for those of you that do know the difference, please let me know down in the comments. Thank comes the usual crown bat top off. But this time around, you have the option for a detachable bat top, which is actually fucking sad as a feature because you know, Sanwich submits you whatever they had it forever. But anyway, it still allows me to pretty up my stick to compensate for my lack of execution. Jokes aside, with the removable bat top, it allows players who want a ball top. <clears throat> After I put on my super sexy Cuomo ball top, I assumed that JLF ball tops and bat tops were all work. Apparently, I was wrong. I tried my Samo ball top and bat top, and I also put them on different shafts to make sure the threads weren't messed up on those. I don't know what the fuck's going on here, and I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to say what the fuck is going on. Fuck. Now back to our regularly scheduled program varying heights of bat tops, or simply color match their lever to their fight stick to give that extra personal touch, which I do feel like was a missed opportunity with the Young, but they just stuck to their guns with a fixed back top. Aiding in tension, the new Help Me comes with the DX core. The inside diameter of this thing actually grips onto the shaft a lot better and aids in wobble when it returns back from neutral. It also gives it a little bit of a tension buff due to it being wider than the stock black core. Unfortunately, my unit came with a DX core that was really tight on the shaft, or to the point where the bat top wasn't spinning. So after I took it apart a couple of times and I had a stink it went back to normal something to look out for if you run into the same thing but uh maybe you should just uh put that shaft in in and out 
real slow and see if you get some results. Problem aside, similar to the Taeyang, there are actually two actuators to choose from this time around, the 16mm and the 16.2mm. The 16mm is the same size found in the base 309MJs, and the 16.2mm is for somebody who wants an even smaller area of neutral with bigger diagonals, more than that of the base model MJ and the original Helmet can even offer. Now the next bits are actually kind of interesting, as the switches are the usual Gersung A3s with thicker hinges, which means you need to smack the lever more better. For the up direction, you will find a harder to actuate A3 that helps players from accidental up inputs. And finally, the last new addition to the 309MJ is the new medium tension grommet, which is a 38, which in my hands are perfect and I wish it would have came in the original MJ body to begin with, rounding out the somewhat medium tension to medium actuation force. Typically, even though there is six options now concluding this new Helmi, I usually recommend the base model 309MJ. With its new creature comforts from the Helmi, I'm curious to see if this is going to replace my usual recommendation. <laughs> So let's start things off with Lil Tay. Lil Tay's tension buff makes the base model sharing the exact same 45A grommet feel like a 35A in comparison. Now considering I'm a player that prefers about 32 to 35A grommet preference, I did find myself taking more time to adjust to the tension that is the 45A grommet, and paired with the softer actuation of the A2s can be a little unforgiving at times, as any botched input or just any you know hiccup in your movement can give you a miss input. For example, during the electric, I would hit the down two and save a down four two. I would hit the down two just because I would skim it as I was going to the diagonal due to the softer actuation. And then I would miss the diagonal because I would forget to actually commit to the direction and put enough force to actually get there. So after adjusting my efforts, I began to get the inputs I actually wanted. And before I knew it, this was the first lever that I landed four pukas with. I know, scrub lord shit. But sometimes you just be a scrub all your life. Adding to that though, there is quite a bit of wobble when the bat top returns back to neutral. It does have more wobble than that of my 29GN, my Fujin, and my new help me. Since I was playing on these levers beforehand, it was just a lot more noticeable. Moving on to a situation where maybe like a 2D player would relate my hit confirms into a double quarter circle or just quarter circles in general. I didn't really feel like I was ever going to overshoot and hit that upward diagonal as the tension would regulate my hand from going any further than the forward movement. This is also thanks to the circular nature of the short collar kind of levers and I feel like since it is more pronounced being the middle ground between the flat collar and the full collar, you do feel a little bit more and know where you are more within the throw. I did find the 15 and millimeter side being the best of both worlds for 2D and 3D players, having the directional close in range and getting the most out of smaller throws. For me, usually I prefer the 14 and half millimeter side, especially when it comes to the base model. But for whatever reason on the short collar, I would like to be maybe about one, two, three millimeters bigger, turning me into one of the people who prefer the area of actuation between that one millimeter of difference. Five electrics in a row, but this 14 and half millimeters looking good. But before concluding my thoughts on the Young pants, we're gonna have to talk about yet another MJ. Starting with the new 38 grommet, as I mentioned previously on my other videos, I do sit in the middle of the 25 to about 35 range and I always wish there was something in the middle. With the 38 coming in this new help me definitely serves exactly what I've been looking for. Unfortunately not all of the new additional items quite impress me like the new 38 grommet such as the new switches that are supposed to be modded they're about point small ass difference from that of a stock A3. Is the difference there? Probably. Is a newcomer gonna notice? Probably not. Is your girlfriend gonna notice the difference between you and the guy she tells you not to worry about? Probably by point one. but I could be wrong and results may vary. And lastly, although personal, the crown bat top is beautiful, but unfortunately it doesn't mesh my grip very well as I found my fingers slipping off of it during certain movements. So F's in the chat. With the negatives out of the way and a wardrobe change, I noticed that the Help Me is the most solid lever that I've been able to play on for the crown series when I compare it to the base model 309 MJ and the OG Help Me. During something like a quarter circle two, instant while running two, uh, the only times I would have a problem is when I would try to triple tap the lever, I would kind of hold the lever too far in one of the inputs and I would only get two because I wouldn't allow the switch to return to a neutral 
neutral state. I think this may be due to the smaller area of neutral as when I play on a bigger area of neutral, by the time I would release my hand from the forward movement, it would be in a neutral state, but compared to that on the smaller actuation, it'd be a little bit further back. Now long ago, I used to main a 309 MJ, so I felt most comfortable to the 16 millimeter, where I pretty much could play 2D and 3D comfortably. But when it came to the 16.2 millimeter actuator, I felt like it shrunk the area of neutral a little too much for me, making me feel almost claustrophobic. For example, during a crouch dash four wall combo with Kazuya, instead of hitting that forward four, I would sometimes get that up forward four, getting Kazuya's Tatsumaki, leading me to believe that the area of actuation can be a little too small for the way I play at times. <laughs> Now that doesn't mean the bigger actuator is all doom and gloom, as it brings your area of actuation closer to the actuator itself, making your inputs technically faster, as you don't need to move nearly as far for any movement. This means you won't have to fatigue any longer if you decide to put a different grommet in or something, or even if you're a newcomer and just getting used to the tension that's already offered in the help me. This also brings it closer to a japanese s style of actuation, being really close and allowing for less movement of the lever itself, while still retaining a very korean-esque feel. So for those of you looking for a middle ground, this might might be your best new option. If you really need to know what the 16mm feels like, it feels like a remastered version of the 309MJ with a better grommet. Don't at me. In conclusion, if you're looking at the 309 Help Me and you compare it to its MJ brothers, it's going to look a little something like this. It's more tension than that of the base model 309 MJ and it's going to feel a lot more solid thanks to the new DX score and possibly the new body. The area of neutral is going to be smaller than that compared to the CDP or the Benulus. This means you're going to engage switches earlier within the throw, which also means you won't have to travel as far for a diagonal. And then you have the option to have the biggest diagonals in the game compared to its MJ brothers and its predecessor, the 309 Help Me Full Collar. In short, if you're looking for a small throw, big diagonals, small area of actuation, and the smallest travel to engage a switch, then the Help Me is going to be for you. For those of you looking at the short collar Young, this is simply put the only option that tight ropes in between the flat collar and the full collar experience, so that could be a deciding factor for most. It takes the formula from its full collar brethren, optimizes it for those who want the fastest return to neutral in the wicked wild west of Korea, beating out the 47C, 49S, and knee lever. And then you can go from diagonal similar to that of the Alpha series or like a base model Myung Shin, and then on the weekend switch over to a Fujin style of diagonal and even area of actuation with the flip of an actuator, simply making this the best value lever period. In terms of replicating its predecessor, it does come close, but due to the tension buff it does give it a different feeling, like landing in Hell Sweep or a Snake Edge. Same but different. I'm gonna get crucified. So if you're looking for something that has a long throw, flexibility within the area of neutral and diagonal size while having the fastest return to neutral and the least amount of force required to activate a switch, then the Young is the only fucking one you can choose and this video is fucking done. As you guys probably noticed, I didn't really directly compare the Help Me to the Young as they offer two different feels and the whole, like the way they're built, caters to two opposite sizes of the spectrum, where the Crown is more of a medium tension short throw and the Young is a high tension, low actuation with a long throw. There you go. If you needed that, you got it now. I figured I should mention this as it did sour my experience with the 309 Help Me. The whole bat top knot spinning thing almost made me send it to the retirement center where my JLF resides. As for somebody like me, I'm kind of used to these kind of abnormalities, but if I was a newcomer, this would be something that would leave a very sour taste in my mouth as the lever is not able to perform the way I expect it to, as well as the whole bat top knot fitting thing. But so far, it looks like I'm the only one with this issue. Now, the Young didn't exactly come perfectly either, but I didn't have anything that affected gameplay. My actuator came with a big chip in it, but hey, it didn't affect gameplay. Play, so I really don't have anything to say about it. And something I've never done before is I'm going to be leaving my Twitch link down below in the description. So yeah, I hope to make this more of a regular thing. Maybe the day I upload videos will be the day I stream and I get to talk and interact with you guys. Especially during a time like this where it's getting kind of crazy, I try to take the positives where I can. And during the time of me making this video, I actually hit 1,000 with subscribers. I love you guys. You guys is the shit. I do super duper ultra appreciate it for every single one of you that has decided to subscribe to my channel as I never incentivized for you guys to do so. I never said this stereotypical YouTuber bullshit at the end of my videos, and I never plan on doing so. I always hope my content would make you want to do it yourself. With that said, I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you guys on the stream, in the comment section, or in my future videos. Until then, peace out, until next time. Actually, actually stay safe, you little shit muffins. Stay safe. Welcome to the revolution.